Hello, I'm Heather Broadbent. The foundation to playing the violin is the violin hold. And in this video, I'm going to share four secrets with you of the violin hold. What's very, very important about the violin hold. So four secrets, okay? I've had many students who did not listen to the four secrets and they continued on with problems with their holding of the violin. And later on down the road on their violin journey, they started to develop some actual pain while playing the violin. And a lot of it had to do with actually not holding the violin correctly and not putting into practice the four secrets. The four secrets are important because they lay the foundation for your violin journey. So if you learn them right away, it's as if your path has no construction later on. No repairs, no orange barrels. You just get to go on kind of smoothly in your violin journey. That is as if you, that is if you listen to the four secrets and maintain those four secrets in your violin playing. If bad habits develop, then you have to readjust and change those bad habits back into good habits. So let me get into these four secrets. The four secrets. First, when you hold the violin, you want to bring the violin to you. You don't want to come to the violin. That's secret number one. Bring the violin to you. Many times, students will reach over, they'll bring their shoulder up high, they think they have to clench. A lot of times, their body doesn't stay straight up and tall. They stick out their belly thinking that's going to help hold the violin. Just like anything that's new for your body, your muscles have to develop. So you don't want to have tension to help hold the violin. It's just a matter of muscle strengthening. Remember, stand tall, straight and tall like a tree, and bring the violin to you, okay? Now, if you find that you have to raise your shoulder, you have to do something weird with your jaw to hold the violin, you wanna look into getting a shoulder rest or look at the chin rest that you're using. You wanna keep your neck straight up, straight up and tall. You don't want it to be like bending over or um, doing anything weird to hold the violin. Because you have to think about this, you're gonna be practicing for many, many hours, and if you're doing something weird with your neck, you're actually going to start to be that way permanently. It's no joke. I had a violinist student of mine that would constantly raise her shoulder when she would play the violin. She wouldn't listen, wouldn't listen, constantly would raise her shoulder. So after about five years, without holding the violin, she was in her younger years, so very important years for the body to develop, she actually had one shoulder higher than the other. You want to make sure that that doesn't happen. You want to keep your body very relaxed, very straight and tall, and your neck very straight. So back to the violin, bringing it to you. If you have to do something weird, look into maybe getting a shoulder rest. I use a Kuhn. This is a Kuhn Bravo shoulder rest, and it just gives me some extra height. I also use a center chin rest. A lot of times the chin rests are over here on the violin, and uh, many professionals that use chin rests that are sitting over here do still sit here over the tailpiece, even though the chin rest is here. Now, a couple of things about a chin rest. It's called a chin rest, but your chin does not really sit on the chin rest. If your chin sat on the chin rest, you'd be holding it like this. If you had one of those side ones, as a center one, it would be like this, and that causes strain. I already feel it in my neck. So because it's called a chin rest, don't think your chin sits on it. It's actually your jaw. It really should be called a jaw rest. So you have this wonderful little bone here in your jaw. It's like a little corner and you have your collarbone. And these two bones are very helpful in holding the violin. So you bring your violin up in there. My jaw bone sits right over this little hump on my chin rest. This, this is called a Carl Flesch chin rest with a hump. It comes without a hump, but I use the hump. And <clears throat> my jaw sits right on there, and my shoulder sits obviously under the shoulder rest. And a lot of times when I check my students or, that I uh, have, I check their neck to make sure back here that their neck is straight up and down. If it's not straight up and down, then the shoulder rest needs to be a little higher or a little lower depending on the angle that your head is sitting. So if it's sitting over this way, then the shoulder rest needs to be higher. If it's sitting over this way, the shoulder rest is too high, so you want to bring it lower. And if you find that the shoulder rest is too high, just use a sponge. Just use something to help you maintain the, the straightness of your neck. So that's, that's the secret number one of the violin hold, bringing the violin to you, that your neck is straight up and down, and it sits right in there. 
Okay, secret number two is the elbow of the violin hold here. This elbow needs to just kind of hang out. He hangs down. You don't want him to be sitting out this way. You see that? There's actually, that'll cause tension as well. So the elbow needs to be under the violin, or if anything, it needs to come under a little bit more. So either hang naturally, or come under a little bit more. This helps your left hand here. When, when you have some difficult passages, some left hand pizzicato, some things with your fourth finger extensions, bringing the elbow under helps that fourth finger out, okay? So that's secret number two. Basic secret, but also helping you with some advanced techniques as well. And fourth finger extensions, bring that elbow under to help out. Okay, secret three is the left hand. The very basic secret of all violin playing is to be relaxed. For the left hand, it's to be relaxed. The best left hand for the violin is a relaxed left hand. So when you bring your hand up, you have to be able to hold the violin here with your jaw and your shoulder. Okay, the hold is happening here. It's not happening here. You don't want to strangle the violin. If you have tension, I call that the prison of tension. And tension will keep you imprisoned. You will not be able to do a lot of the techniques on the violin if you're tense. Your sound will not be as good. If you're strangling the violin, your sound is going to sound strangled. So important to be relaxed, very important. Your left hand, if you find that it's not relaxed, go ahead and shake it out and then bring it to the violin. The palm always faces the fingerboard, always faces the fingerboard. So you wanna to wave to the fingerboard, make sure your finger's all nice and relaxed. Also make sure your thumb is relaxed. That's another very famous place to have tension, is to have tension in the thumb here. So all relaxed, okay? So that's secret three. Secret four, how to set up this left hand. Check out your fourth finger. A lot of times when you start the violin, many, many, many methods start you with the first finger on the violin. This is fine, but it's very easy for the left hand to flip out and have what I call flyaway fingers and the palm is open when you play the first finger. So the best way is to actually check out your fourth finger. Make sure your fourth finger can play nice and rounded here. And if he can sit nice and rounded, then find the position for all the other fingers. So it's gonna feel really strange and it might be a very different technique and a very different way for you to think about the left hand, but I promise it will help tremendously. And it might take some training if you've already started the violin and you're years into the violin. It's gonna take a little bit of retraining for your left hand, but if you have problems with your fourth finger, your fourth finger is either flat, it doesn't come down nice, it's always out of tune, this is a great way to kind of check it out, see what's going on. Maybe the elbow isn't underneath, enough and your fourth finger isn't isn't playing nice and rounded so keep an eye on that fourth finger that he is nice and rounded and then set all the other fingers down so it's going to feel like i said it's going to feel a little different but that will really help with a, a very solid and balanced left hand not that all the power is to that first finger but that it's balanced and it hangs on these fingers here the two and the three and your one and four it just feels really centered strong and balanced that's what you're looking for Okay, so I'll review our four secrets. Secret one, violin hold. Have the violin come to you and not you to the violin. Check out some equipment changes if you need to keep your neck straight up and down. Secret two, elbow relaxed, hanging or under a little bit. Okay, not the other direction. Secret three, relaxed left hand. Shake it out if you need to. Nice relaxed thumb. And then secret four, the fingers. Make sure your fourth finger is nice and rounded when he comes down. And that all the other fingers, when they come down, that they come down without tension. That you're not strangling the violin between your first finger, or I'm sorry, your thumb or any finger, first, second, or third finger. You also, a little bit more on that fourth secret, you also want to make sure that you are not strangling here. If you've come into the world of vibrato, it's very difficult to vibrate if you're strangling the violin. A lot of violinists will actually string the vi strangle the violin, then when they get to vibrato, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do vibrato. Well, it's because you're strangling the violin. You can't move. You try to move the violin, your whole violin is moving. That's, that's not good. 
the secret there, relax left hand in space. You have a space and then that way you can vibrate more easily. So that's just an example of if you set up these secrets to your foundation right away, when you go into the more advanced techniques of violin playing, you're on a golden path because you don't have these problems that you have to fix along with learning a new technique. So, enjoy, always remember, happy practicing, and be pure in heart, fresh from the start with the violin.